Hi guys, so today I'm going to do some cross stitch math with you while starting my small series which I will do as a gift. So this consists of three patterns I got which are similar but not exactly the same size. Now let me see what I can show you without showing the pattern. Um, so I have this one and this one and that one. So you really can't really see it that well but it doesn't matter because it's about calculating stuff today. So my goal is to get these into three similar size pieces or same size pieces so they go together well on the wall and I use the same frame for all of them. So today what I want to do is how to calculate the fabric size, how to calculate the frame you need for this, how I cut my fabric and how I find my starting point. Now let's start. So I start by comparing the sizes of these patterns. So on every pattern you should have something like this that states, now come on, here. So it's 52 by 87 stitches. That's the size of the pattern. Um, these have similar but not the same pattern. So let me see. I noted all of these data down. So this is the dark one. It has a frame stitched around it. And the other ones have writing on the top and the bottom. And I can change that those letters up to make it like smaller as I need it and those are much smaller narrow narrower than that dark one which will determine the size of all of those because it's the widest of that of them and it has a frame you don't really see it but it's like a fire and you see a frame stitched around here you just have to believe me and I want to stitch a frame like one size stitches it's just around here with rounded edges and I want to do this for all three of them just stitch like one row of cross stitches around each of these designs so they fit together now I noted down the stitch count of these and you see they are not that big of a difference. These are higher but not by much. Especially this is a little bit higher but it's like three stitches so it's really not a big deal and the width is also doable. So this is just wide because of the writing that which I want to change and this is much narrower so this in the middle is the date data for the dark fire one. So I put, this is the stitch count, I put this into a cross stitch fabric calculator. When you look for this, you find many different websites. You just have to Google it. I like to use, let me see. I like to use the one from crossstitch.com because it has a centimeter. Um, it calculates inches and centimeters. And what you do is you put in width and height of the stitches. Then you put in what fabric you have. I'm working with 16 count or 32 count Ada or Murano, which is the same 16 count and 32, it doesn't really matter. And down here it tells you the size in inches or centimeters of the design and you can also have it calculate the edge you need around your fabric. Okay, let me show this to you real quick. So this is our design size. We just got this from the calculator. Then I looked up online which frames I could order, like the regular sizes you just get in any store. So I don't have to look for anything. And um, I decided on 
13 by 18 and I even drew a little picture that was like to the real size and just scribbled something in it and looked how much margin I would need for the frame for the image to not look too cramped. So I could have gone a size smaller but I didn't like the look of it so I got this frame a size up which is 18 by 13 centimeters. Then I subtract the size of the design and it makes a margin around the image of the design to four or five centimeters. So here it's five centimeters, here it's four centimeters dif difference in total. So as I center my piece, I of course have to divide the difference by two because of course it's the same amount of margin on each side. So this is the amount of fabric I have on each side around the stitched design. It's not a lot. It's like an inch. Um, this is, I think, two and a half centimeters is an inch. Okay, now I add to that the lacing. Now, if you have bigger images or if you want to do a pillow, it's really good to do those calcula calculations with your fabric in advance because if you have too little fabric, you um, might get in trouble with your plans. I mean, you could always just do something else, but um, this is also really nice with these. Many people leave too much margin on their fabrics, especially on the expensive hand dyes, where you could use, use it for several pieces easily. And so this is just super easy math, and you can save a lot of headaches with this. So um, I add four centimeters with lacing, so that's a little less than two inches. And this is the absolute minimum. Um, how I um, determine that is how much I have to fold the fabric. I mean, usually when I finish my pieces on a in a picture frame, I wrap it around a cardboard that's exactly the size of the frame. So there are always inserts in the frames that I use as a sample and I trace around that on cardboard and then I put my piece on that, fold the, the edges around and then lace it on the back. And that is the amount I fold over is what I need for lacing. So the minimum is 4 centimeters for me. and. Um, yeah, so now I add the two and a half centimeters plus the four centimeters of lacing. Um, I mean, I take the bigger number because I only want to calculate with one number. Now, that's the minimum of six and a half centimeters on each side is what I need around my design to have enough fabric. I rounded this up to seven centimeters just for easier calculations and so seven centimeters on each side means by two because I need it on every side. It's 14 and this is the amount I add to my design size. Add to design size. That is the size of the fabric we need. Then um, I just did it here. I took my numbers from the design size added 14 and 22 by 28 centimeters is now the fabric I need for each of these. And now we go over to tracing it on the fabric and cutting. Now I am telling you how I did that. Let me see where I have my calculations. So what I did was this. This is the size of each project. I need three pieces. This is the size in centimeters of the fat quarter. And then I thought, okay, I just typed into my calculator, okay, what is three times 28? What is, what is three times 22? What is two times 22 plus one times 28? And I just calculated around 
and matched it to the 68 on this side and the um, 48 on the narrow side. So one option I had was putting like all the 22 by 3 on here and um, so I would have 22, 22, 22 down here and I would have it go 28 centimeters down here. So that would leave me with a stripe of leftover fabric of 20 centimeters. So this is something I it will be hard to find a use for a narrow stripe of 20 centimeters. So I thought maybe I can change the numbers. So I decided because you know I added half a centimeter before to my calculations. I decided to make my piece just 21 centimeters wide and 28 centimeters long. So I cut it by one centimeter, which cuts every side by half a centimeter. And that makes me able to put the two long pieces down here and that long piece direction to here. That leaves me with a pretty square rectangular piece of fabric that I can still use easy for another project. So a narrow stripe would be like just a scrap fabric I have laying around. And I think this is the perfect way to use the fabric and I'm still within my calculations because I was, I added like, I added half a centimeter before to make the number round and I don't know why I, why I did that but I thought oh I have enough fabric but that's just how I run the number so I see okay what what will I take away from this and I will look at my measuring tape and see oh okay is this doable if I make the pieces of fabric smaller or is it not and it is so yeah that's how I calculate my fabric. Now what I will do is we'll, I will measure these parts and cut them and then I will see you in the next clip. Okay, so I filmed this on another day. So I think last time I showed you how I measure the layout of the fabric and now what I do is pre-grid just the outside of the fabric so I'm sure that I didn't make any mistakes in my calculations and I know where to start and this is super quick so what I do is now last time I determined that I need six and a half centimeters on the outside so I take my measure and measure six and a half centimeters And I just take a needle and put it into the fabric where it is, where it's supposed to be. And then I measure from the top and adjust my needle where it's supposed to be. And then I measure again and again and again. And then I just use some floss. I will use cheap CXC floss or some floss that I don't know which color it is or something from my stash and then I go and make like two tiny stitches on here to secure the thread and this is nothing permanent as soon as you start stitching you can undo this but yeah I go 10 stitches below 10 stitches up so if you stitch over two threads of floss or fabric which is like when you skip two threads on the fabric, you have to count tw to 20 or just count to 10, but you know, skipping the two threads of fabric. So be careful of that. Um, when you're not used to it, it's difficult. And then I recommend you do this for the full layout. 
So I counted 52 stitches of my design and it's two here. And the only reason I just tried to do it super quick and I miscounted by 10. So I counted to 62 instead of 52. And the only reason I found that my mistake and it would have ruined my fabric cut is because I also did my other measurement and stitched it down here of the other image that I want to cut. So it's like that. So this is the short side is here. The orientation is like, here's the short side, here's the long side. So this that's this one. And on here, it's the long side up here and the short side will be down here. So I measured, it's like 87 stitches from long so i measured six and a half centimeters so or whatever inches you have calculated then i go 10 down 10 up 10 down 10 up 10 down 10 up 10 down 10 up and this is super easy if you want to reach a certain spot in your stitching if you want to start from the middle I mean, you can fold your fabric, but this is like a super easy way. It's so, so quick to visualize what you need and where you want to stitch. So I don't grid the full fabric. I just do the outlines and then you can recount like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and it's 87 stitches up here. And when I... I found my mistake up here when I said, okay, I have six and a half centimeters from this side to the middle and six and a half centimeters from this side and it didn't add up. I only had 11 centimeters instead of 13. So yeah, I was confused, but I pretty quickly just recounted this and I figured out that I counted 10 stitches too far on here and it's supposed to go down here and I won't rip this out so I know now how this goes um, so now I have six and a half centimeters up until here and I measure from this point six and a half centimeters up until here and I just mark it with with floss. I just take my needle and mark everything with floss and if I make a mistake I just quickly pull it out and restitch where I need to go and this is super quick and super safe so you if you miscalculate if you miscalculate the size or if there's too little fabric left now you can still undo all the plans and do it in a different way. So this is why I like this method. Okay, so now the final words towards preparation before I'm cutting this those pieces. Now I have the middle up here, then I have the middle between this one and that one. So I had stitched that one. And now I mark this one, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52. So the middle of those, I measured six and a half centimeters down here and six and a half here. And then we have the third piece up here from before and I extended it to seven and a half centimeters of a border to here because I have much fabric left over here which I probably won't use because it's not as big and then I noticed that this one and this one overlap here with their extra fabric but just a tiny bit so here's the extra fabric here's the extra fabric and here comes the line from the fabric of these above and so we're right here and I just have to cut a little edge and I mean it's on the edge of the pieces so it's in a corner and when framing you don't really need those corners sometimes I even cut the corner so I have less fabric on the back of when finishing 
the product. And of course, I'm gonna show you how I finish my product, but there's plenty of videos out there which I took as reference also. So I'm not inventing anything, but this is what I usually do when preparing my fabric. Now I will cut along this line. It's just loose stitches. I didn't count anything here. It's just I measured the spacing from here is where it's stitched and then I just have the space I need. Um, yeah, so next. Finally, we're stitching. Now I've cut all of the fabric. These are the parts and you only see super tiny marks on here and they might look irregular, but when you look closer, these are the ones that count. Now they are loose ends, they don't count, but there's a stitch in the center and this is the point where the upper corner is and this is the other point where the other upper corner is. So I ripped out all the pre-gridding. I usually, actually, I don't do that. Most of the time I rip it out as I go, but here I had to rearrange. You now I had more give in one direction and so I had to, to have a little bit more of an edge because I had more fabric left than I anticipated so, or that I calculated. And um, yeah, so I took out the stitches I made and or the marks I made and this is the one where I accidentally counted 62 instead of 52 and it was too wide. So I corrected that and instead of, you know, I could use a new color maybe if you don't want to rip out the one and just move it, but I just counted like half a centimeter when I wanted to move something and just took a new thread and marked it with a super simple mark. You can maybe, what I like to do is a stitch like that. So you see this is outside, this is outside and this is the inside top corner of that stitch, stitching. So I marked all of the pieces. They are all centered now and let me see, tell you instead of a 20 centimeter small long band, I now have a substantial amount of fabric that I can work with. I can easily do something nice on here. So that's why I wanted to measure and calculate so much how I place my fabric or how I place the design on the fabric. Okay, finally, now where do you start the stitch? Usually with these small designs, I would start in the center. So if you want to find your center, you just fold your fabric in half. If you have, now I know I measured six and a half centimeters on each side or seven in some cases, but that's just the way to find the center of your piece. Let me zoom you in. So you fold it in half and then you fold it again and then you can take a needle and just 
put it in here in the corner fold and that's where your center is. It's okay if you're a little bit off, you know, it doesn't have to be super exact, but I just push my needle into the center and yeah, now you know where your middle is. And some patterns have it marked, sometimes you have to count on your pattern, but um, now I just make a stitch, so I check, please, please guys, check where your top is and where your side is, so you stitch in the right direction and compare it to your pattern, but now I would just maybe just start with one of those stitches that are around. Okay, I don't know where I left off, my camera card was full again. So super quickly now, um, you either start in the center, in whichever direction you want, you just make your cross and just start. And what I want to do is first stitch the frame. So I will stitch three super simple frames. The one, this one has a super simple frame on the outside, is it's just missing three stitches, so it has those rounded edges. Hello, camera, please. Okay, so I will just start stitching these rounded edges. Now I would count two stitches from the top corner. It has those edges in every corner. And in this case, I will just count from my mark up here, two stitches to the right. So one, two, and this is where I'm going to make my first cross and start stitching all around. So you can start whenever you want. If you have a full coverage, look up my Gecko Rouge, how I start a Gecko Rouge tutorial. I will show you if, I, if you have a gridded fabric, how you start a full coverage kit from Gecko Rouge. But the things I talk about in that video apply to all kinds of full coverage pieces. But this is just my little tutorial for smalls. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I really didn't have a plan of what I was doing. I just went for it. I hope I didn't make it more complicated or anyway. And you maybe could take something from it or at least had fun. Thank you so much for watching. I have many new videos to come very soon, so much interesting stuff, um, so please comment and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!